Hello everyone, welcome to Bay and Buy IAS. Welcome to the news analysis on Hindu paper. Today is 19th of July 2022. So let us look at what are the articles which are relevant for UPSC in today's newspaper. See, these are all the articles that we are going to cover. Overall, there are 10 articles which are highly relevant for UPSC examination. So let us look at them one by one, starting with the continuation of Q on presidential elections. Kalwala news me dekha tha humne presidential ka election president for the post of the president elections were held yesterday, that is 18th of July. So let us look the continuation of the same. See, this is one of the advantages of covering the newspaper daily that we get the entire story clearly. Because whenever some contemporary news happens, it has the connection. So connecting these dots will help us in the examination. And then we will be looking at monkeypox case, cryptocurrency and crypto loss. And then India and Russia relations, particularly with respect to the oil payment and NPAs and issues on MSP, minimum support price and our defense exports india china talks with respect to de-escalation in ladakh region and minority status in india is a state dependent says supreme court and finally the international organization that is Shanghai cooperation organization let us look at these articles one by one starting with the very first one the yesterday the presidential elections have taken place in which 99% of the polling has happened. See, the polling and everything is not relevant for us, but what is relevant for us is the constitutional provisions regarding the president and the electoral college, which we have discussed yesterday, and how the votes of MLA and MP are calculated. Plus, when it is declared, when some person is declared one. That is when they got electoral quota. So now, what are the constitutional provisions related to the president? Of course, president is part of union executive, which comes in fifth part of the constitution. And he is the head of Republic of India. And we follow parliamentary form of government. That means he is a nominal head. Apart from that, the articles which does deal with the president includes article 54 which which deals with the election of the president which is conducted by election commission of india and 55 the manner of election of the president that is proportional representation by means of a single transferable vote this is the method that is generally followed and the term of the president five years generally then Eligibility for re-election, Article 57 and finally 58 deals about the qualifications for the election as president. Now, electoral college, yesterday we have already covered it, so I'm not going to go much into it. It includes the elected members of both houses and elected members of the state legislative assemblies as well. So here, please remember the nominated members are not there. And coming to the value of vote of MP and MLA, we have seen it yesterday. So we are going further. See, this is a continuation. If it repeats, I will try to cover the functions and roles of president in the coming lectures. Next, the second one is second monkeypox case in Kerala. See, it has erupted and the government got alert and it is showing. 21 days quarantine and observing, keeping a surveillance on those candidates and doing the tracking. Now, we need to know a little bit about the disease. Say it is a zoonotic disease, meaning it transmits from animal to the human and it was first noticed and it is mainly endemic to Nigeria. The symptoms include people break out in a rash, which looks like chickenpox but the fever malice and headache from monkeypox are usual 
usually more severe than what we experience in chicken fox infection coming to the transmission it's mainly zoonotic means primarily it is with the contact of the animals their blood or bodily fluids and eating uncooked meat of course human to human transmission is also possible that is one of the reasons why it is becoming deadly then coming to the treatment there is no specific treatment and there is no vaccine for the same disease so these are the information that we need to know next the third article is crypto laws needs global framework says finance minister first of all let us understand what are cryptocurrencies the cryptocurrency is any form of currency that exists either digitally that is virtually and uses cryptography that is encryption there is a encoding encryption is there to secure the transaction it is generally put on a decentralized ledger using a technology called blockchain so it is a open open system or decentralized ledger that is one of the reasons why it gets extra protection now coming to the current in news say according to finance minister she says that cryptocurrencies are boundaryless so in order to regulate them we need a global framework now looking at here we can say that in order to regulate the cryptocurrencies we need to have an international cooperation and collaboration and plus please remember the queue here rbi has been like very cautious about these cryptocurrencies and in 2018 it even prohibited and regulated the entries of virtual currencies but however this has been set aside by the supreme court judgment now after that rbi uh, cautioned all the institutions to limit the use of cryptocurrencies because of its volatility see yahan par advantages are also there advantages of cryptocurrencies also there at the same time disadvantages are there so it is a technology which can be used for both good and bad for example in good you can use it for easy seamless and virtual and immediate transactions whereas when it comes to disadvantages because of its anonymity it can be used for mal practices and malified intentions such as terror funding money laundering etc so this is the issue why it needs to be regulated then going to the fourth one russia said to seek indian oil payments in uae dirhams see you know that there are sanctions on russia due to the ongoing war between russia and ukraine as a result of it many western nations have put sanctions on russia so as a result of it russia is financially choked however it is doing trade in oil altern in an alternative manner not in the dollar but for example it is doing with india either indian uh, rupee and ruble transactions ruble is the currency of russia and now uh, what we see is it is seeking payments in uae's dirhams see this is not important for us what is important more for us is with respect to the oil so there is international questioning to india that under those circumstances if you are buying from russia it means helping russia are you supporting this war are you supporting the occupation of russia and the war of russia on ukraine see when this question has been put our external minister foreign minister said that when we are buying the oil we send to buy the oil not like uh, buying from russia or buying from uae or buying from any other we simply go and buy the oil which is best for the india's interest that is we need to reduce the cost and another thing is india is heavily depend on oil jaise 85% of oil requirement jo hai that is met through imports only 
so as a result of it if there is any volatility or if there is any instability in sources of our oil then what will happen it will have serious impact on our energy security that is the reason why the government has been trying to diversify its supply of resources with respect to particularly oil and natural gas and we wanted to have more gas into our energy basket because it is cheaper plus comparatively cleaner compared to your crude oil so that was the main reason and that is the reason why we are buying the oil from russia so yahan par hum proper analysis kar sakte what are the positives and what are the negatives that is arguments in favor of buying oil from russia which are in the interest of india particularly domestic interests of india and negative implications that is with respect to the ongoing sanctions and ongoing protest on russia's invasion in ukraine so in dono ka analysis kar sakte hain now moving on the next article is government rbi measures aid npa recovery see we need to understand what are npas and implications of it what are the laws related with npas here the npa hota kya hai any loan or any advance which is taken by anybody if the person defaults person or an organization defaults that is they are not paying either the interest or the principal amount then after a period of 90 days it converts into non performing asset that means which becomes which is a liability which is not at all performing which is not at all yielding any return be it interest or principal amount such all all such payments or all such arrears we can call them as npas okay now to deal with npas india had made a uh, lot of laws and provisions are there for example uh, surface act which provides for drcs and uh, we have insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 later it has been amended also there is the concept of bad bank which can buy these npas and then later recovers them so in this manner various provisions are there and we can do the same analysis of npas what are the implications of npas on the economy of the country the as a result of this uh, stressed assets or non performing assets the banks are not able to give loans and their uh, their uh, sheets balance sheets are really stressed so this is having a negative implications on the economic growth of the country so this is all about this article moving ahead the next one is panel on msp and natural farming setup say it was in continuation with that farming laws repealing of the farming laws now we need to understand here what is msp that is minimum support price and how it is determined what is the mechanism behind it see it is the rate at which the government buys grain from the farmer not just grain all the 23 uh, notified crops at a minimum cost if it is not available in the market see uh, it is fixed twice a year just before the kharif season and just before the rabi season and it is done by commission for agricultural costs and prices it is a statutory body and it recommends later on on the basis of it the cabinet committee on economic affairs cabinet committee on economic affairs approves the same now it is you no know, it comes to the the cost of msp or the price of msp Uh, by taking into consideration of a2 plus fl and c2 what are what are the meanings of these a2 a2 means all the paid out expenses including the the ones paid in cash or kind which is incurred by the uh, farmers for example seeds fertilizers chemicals hired labor irrigation fuel etc now fl includes family labor because uh, most of the family members does work in the agricultural field then c2 includes it is the cost for the rental and interest foregone so all three of them included and msp is determined and it is determined at 1.5 times of it so that the farmers can get 
some profit. See, it is in line with the 2017 announcement that to double the income of farmers. Okay, so these are all the things related to MSP. Now going ahead, the next one is our defense exports have gone up seven times. This is very important. This shows the transition of India. मतलब एक टाइम पे हम बहुत ज्यादा इंपोर्ट्स करते थे नाउ वी आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स लाइक हेवी इंपोर्टर टू हेवी एक्सपोर्टर यू कैन सी ओवर द लास्ट सेवन टू एट इयर्स द इंपोर्ट्स हैव रिड्यूस्ड सिग्निफिकेंटली ऑलमोस्ट देर इज अ डिक्लाइन ऑफ ट्वेंटी वन परसेंट एट द सेम टाइम हमारा जो एक्सपोर्ट्स है वो सेवन टाइम्स इंक्रीज हुआ है यू कैन सी बिटवीन दिस टाइम पीरियड देर इज लाइक सेवन ग्रोथ and for this various initiatives have been taken up for example the uh, defense export policy draft has been made and council imports imports ko reduce karne ke liye council set up kiya hai and there was a list like positive list karke diya hai jahan par aapko domestic content and domestic material pe zyada focus karna chahiye all of it is going in line with make in india make in india initiative right make in india and made in india initiative now what is the need to have defense indigenization indigenization matlab local locally india ke andar hi hamara defense equipment banane ki kya need hai so it increases our self reliance as of now according to sipri that is stockholm international peace research institution india is the third largest defense spender and we are importing तो वो इम्पोर्टिंग को हम कम कर सकते हैं एंड वी कैन बिकम सेल्फ रिलायंट एंड एट द सेम टाइम नॉट जस्ट सेल्फ रिलायंट वी कैन बिकम द सरप्लस एंड एक्सपोर्ट द एक्सपोर्ट द वेपन्स ओके एंड डिफेंस इक्विपमेंट देन सेकेंड इज टू रिड्यूस द डिफेंस डिपेंडेंसी ऑन फॉरेन प्लेयर्स एंड एंश्योर सिक्योरिटी ऑफ नेशन एक और बात देखो जब भी हम इम्पोर्ट करते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल Our major importers are like Russia, USA, Israel, etc. Suppose अगर Russia से ज्यादा import कर रहा है तो the relations with USA are being affected. वही USA के साथ ज्यादा import कर रहे हैं तो Russia के साथ जो relations है they are being impacted. So if you become self-reliant and if you reduce these imports from both of them, even our bilateral relations with these countries can be kept intact. Then. it is also to reduce our balance of payment deficit and promote employment and also exports dekho jab india ke andar hi defense equipments banate hain so definitely it is going to boost the employment and growth of the country plus exports are going to give us extra income and to reduce the cost of production in india and thereby reduce the fiscal deficit so these are all the reasons why we need to go for defense indigenization now moving on to the next article Scale mate in India, China talks continue. See this one is useful in GS paper too, particularly international relations. जहाँ पर India and China relations चल रहे. See as of now we have a little bit of strained relations and there is a standoff in Ladakh and talks have been going to de-escalate this region and to focus on again the uh, good talks to have the good relations. See यहाँ पर so far we had like almost 15 rounds of talks and both the sides are collaborating see for example on the sidelines of g20 foreign ministers meeting also we met and discussed the issues along the clac line of actual control so these are all the issues and the cues which we can maintain for our gs paper 2 in ir section right now moving ahead the next one is minority status in india is state dependent says supreme court the this is the uh, view point held by supreme court for a very long period of time the here the term minority is not defined in the constitution however it recognizes the religious and you know linguistic minorities and even protects them through 29 and 30th articles that is which are in the fundamental rights part 3 of the constitution the as per tma pai foundation versus state of karnataka case supreme court held that minority is either linguistic or religious is only determined with respect to the state kyunki if you are taking entire country entire whole nation as a 
one then each and every person will become a minority in another for example here in the words of justice yu yu uh, lalit uh, he says that the every person in this country becomes minority in one state for example a person is hailing from let's say uh, maharashtra that person can be a minority in uh, karnataka with respect to the language language that they are speaking so on the basis of it we cannot have the overall uh, india level uh, status for minorities it is a state dependent one the as of now the government has identified the following religious minorities they are six muslims christians jurastians or parsis and buddhist and jains please remember linguistic minorities ko recognize nahi kiya hai because india has so many linguistic minorities however for the protection of linguistic minorities we do have a constitutional office under 350b which is a linguistic officer for minorities theek hai ye pura information jo hai minorities se related hai and article 20 and 30 jo hai unka cultural and educational rights ko cultural and educational rights ko protect karte hain so this is all about it now let us move to the last section of it that is sangai cooperation organization the iske upar 2021 mains mein question bhi aaya hai iska uh, utility and iska significance basis pe the let us do the little bit of background search of sangai cooperation organization it is a permanent intergovernmental international organization uh, mainly led by uh, china and russia rest of the countries include kazakhstan china kazakhstan russia tajikistan these were known as sangai foi then later india and pakistan became members in 2017 as of now there are observer states and they are pushing for you uh, know full time membership of iran and belarus theek okay? hai so this is all the you uh, know uh, background study of this sangai cooperation organization now coming to its importance and implications we can use this uh, intergovernmental organization where both the russia china and india all three of them are members here we all three have uh, interest in central asian regions stability where we can cooperate and reduce and this uh, sangai cooperation organization ka one of the objectives hai that is to uh, reduce global ter terrorism eliminate global terrorism wahan par bhi hum contribute karke we can work together so this is the importance of it rest of the things you can go ahead with the uh, little bit of research on sangai cooperation organization that's it guys i hope it is useful if it is useful please like share and comment uh, your opinion and how it has to be covered in the coming sections that's it for today's session thank you very much see you again tomorrow session bye everyone